Hi and welcome to the video. Today I want to talk about photographing your artwork. I thought this would be timely, uh, especially because so many of us are going to be exchanging artwork uh, or photos of art uh, online, uh, maybe more now than ever. Uh, instead of being in person, let's say, with a student or teacher situation. That's, that's kind of why I thought about doing this video, because uh, of exchanges I've had with students recently, and, and in the past too, actually. I've thought about this issue for years and tried to figure it out, uh, is um, how to photograph your artwork so that it isn't as distorted as it can be when um, you're taking a picture of a two-dimensional uh, surface uh, like a drawing or a painting there can be some very big distortions and so um, I'm going to deal with uh, with that in and show you how to mitigate that uh, in this video but I do want to also add that there's other distortions in photography that are going to be relevant as well um, and uh, frankly it's not really a fault of photography uh, as such it's it's part of it's a technological uh, problem that that is um, inevitable really uh, there's going to be three kinds of distortion potentially in any photograph of or reproduction of therefore of uh, artwork and they're going to be uh, either distortions of shape distortions of uh, color or distortions of form which is which is really distortion of everything uh, for, from an artist's standpoint. But um, the good news is that those distortions aren't always as equally bad in every picture um, or even equally important in every picture. But to one degree or another, they're always there or potentially always there. Uh, the main one I want to talk about uh, today is the um, distortion of shape. And because that affects drawing, if you think of it, right? Uh, if uh, if your photo doesn't reflect the correct proportions and contours and outlines of whatever it is you're you're presenting, then it'll look like the drawing is off. Um, and and the way the there's well there's a number of ways of of uh, eliminating or maybe not eliminating, but a ways of uh, lessening the the problem. And then how to eliminate it is what we can do after the fact in software. And I want to show you a few ways that um, we can do that. They're really relatively straightforward and much easier than they used to be in the old days. Um, but And even if you're not very computer savvy uh, or don't want to become so, you don't want to start learning things like Photoshop, there are a few simpler methods that you can use. Uh, this is very useful because not just if you're if you're sending me if images, let's say, because I can fix it uh, after the fact if if certain things are taken care of, and I'll talk about that. But even for yourself, when you're photographing your work that you want to post online, or if you want to send to a competition, or put up on your website, or anything, or dealing with another teacher, or maybe you're a teacher as well, and you you want to make sure that you, you're, start, you're starting to do more work online now, and then you want to make sure that your students' work is, is presented as accurately as possible, these are good things to know. And uh, what is nice is that nowadays there are some options for taking care of this that are uh, built right into the software of your camera if you've got a smartphone um, and other cameras as well and are much less expensive as well than uh, uh, now uh, than uh, let's say before your only option was having a big uh, expensive program like like Photoshop um, to take care of these things so uh, we'll we'll get to these examples in in just a moment but before we get to some of those examples Let's take a look at just this picture that you're looking at right here, that uh, the video that that you're watching, and and take a look at this rectangle of the of the screen, and um, you can you can see, I'm sure, that there are lines, uh, vertical lines in here. Like for instance, right there, the vertical of the uh, doorway on this side that looks pretty straight to me, pretty vertical. And uh, what that means is that the uh, camera is more or less right in front of that or pretty pretty darn close so the the closer to the very middle right where the camera is uh, that would be probably the most likely to be perfectly vertical and as you can see as things start going to uh, further away from this center line and if you go if you go all the way over to here uh, you see how that side of the door is 
is actually kind of spreading out uh, outward compared to uh, compared to here, and then and even going further to to those line, you know the vertical lines of the picture frame here, the farther away they get from the middle, uh, they they become more and more spread out, and uh, that is simply uh, lens distortion from the lens of the webcam. And the webcam lens is typically, and this one is, is typically a wide angle lens. And so you get that kind of angling out uh, with a wide angle lens. And then the things that are in the middle are kind of ballooning forward, you know. So the closer I get, you could say, uh, the closer I get, the more the middle of, of the face becomes, uh, becomes um, uh, exaggerated. And the back of the head and the outside, they start to narrow. And it's not until you get quite a bit farther back that that things look a little more proportionate. Um, but that, that kind of distortion is not really what we're going to talk about uh, today uh, because that's more to do with uh, three-dimensional uh, objects like heads and faces and, and puppies and whatever uh, as, uh, as opposed to two-dimensional. So today we're basically going to talk about photographing two-dimensional artwork uh, on paper or paintings or whatever it may be. And uh, those are the types of distortion we'll, we'll try to fix first. Before we get to the uh, types of distortion and showing pictures of them, uh, how to mitigate, how to eliminate or at least mitigate the distortion in pictures, I will at least tell you, you don't have to go past this if you don't want to, there's two things that you must do in order to allow the uh, mitigation or to prevent distortion or to fix it. One is uh, take your photos of your work uh, with your camera, be it a, a smartphone, a uh, point and shoot or a DSLR, whatever it is, the camera should be as parallel to the picture surface as possible. So if this, uh, if this uh, uh, glass were the camera lens, this is the end, front of the lens. That should be perfectly parallel to the picture surface. So in other words, it shouldn't be like that at some angle or the picture shouldn't be uh, somehow uh, angled differently than, than the camera lens. That would be ideal. And uh, that's hard to do. Uh, when, you're, when it's handheld, you can only really guess. And it should be pretty close, but it may not be perfect. Um, you know, some photographers uh, over the years, well, many uh, who are good at this, they would they would have to set up the camera in such a way from the from the, the painting or the, the drawing and measure all, all the parts of it to make sure everything is equidistant. And uh, and that's uh, not only that, it's it's hard to do that. But the other uh, problem that often arises is um, as reflection. So if it's got a shiny surface like a varnished painting or or uh, uh, a drawing or something with uh, glass in front of it, then there's going to be reflection. If the camera's right in front of the the picture, then there's going to be reflection of whatever's behind the camera or the camera itself might be reflecting in the painting. And that's always annoying and very difficult to eliminate. Not not impossible, but it's, it's hard to set that up. Uh, sometimes shooting at a slight angle um, rather than perfectly square, will eliminate a bunch, if not all, of the of the major reflections. And uh, at one time, that was very difficult to manage because um, we couldn't sort of fix it in in oops in in uh, post production as we can now, which is what we're going to be talking about uh, fixing it digitally. Okay, so that's one thing parallel. And the second thing, and this one is super important, maybe even more important is to make sure that at the very least, if you're not going to fix it afterward, and if your teacher or whomever it is, if you're exchanging it with me or whomever, whomever is going to try to straighten it out using software, um, your photo should have, um, I, I think of it like this, every corner of the picture, if it's a rectangle or a square, every corner of the picture should be in the viewfinder of the camera. So you should be able to see it. It doesn't have to be with a lot of room around it. It can be very close to the edges of the camera uh, viewfinder. But if any of the corners are missing or if the picture is too twisted in there so that you know, one corner is, is gone on the top and another one is gone on the bottom, then um, you, it's very hard to straighten that out uh, correctly. So to give yourself a fighting chance, uh, make sure that 
that all four sides or or all four corners, however you want to put it, uh, of your work is in the viewfinder uh, picture of, in the photo that you're taking. Then things can be much more easily fixed after the fact, and you'll see how. Here's my screen, as you can see, this lovely photograph of a nearby Wascana Park in the middle of summer. I really en enjoy this pathway and walk down it many times. All right, I'm going to show you a folder uh, with a bunch of pictures that we'll be looking at. And uh, as you can see, there's a couple of, well, one painting and then the rest are drawings, some bar drawings. And I think this will illustrate quite well what we're talking about. When we look at this picture here, it's, it's the kind of distortion I was talking about with the lens. Uh, but we're not going to go into this very deeply, but I just wanted to illustrate it. You can see this is, um, uh, well, I'll tell you, this, this is a perfect rectangle um, with an X through it, obviously. Um, but what is happening is the outer boundary of the rectangle, you can see, is curved outwards. And it's easy to spot because the frame itself of, uh, of the viewfinder, like the, pic, the, the photograph, is, is perfectly straight. Uh, both horizontally and vertically, and then this compared to it, you can see how, how rounded it is. And that type of distortion is what's called barrel distortion. And if it went the other way, for example, uh, inwards, it would be called pincushion distortion. And we'll talk about that in a future video, but the barrel distortion is probably more common, and it occurs with shorter lenses, which are typically what we uh, think of as wide-angle lenses. So this one is 28 millimeters. It's on a zoom, but it's 28 millimeter end of it. So that creates the uh, distortion of pin cushioning. Um, either way, that's, uh, that's fixable in post-production that I'm going to talk to you about this. But this, uh, this rectangle here illustrates probably the most important thing uh, that you can do besides getting your, your camera as, as, as uh, parallel uh, with the picture plane as you can, the, the, the really the most important thing is to make sure that all four corners of your picture are in the viewfinder. That's super important. And it doesn't have to be like like this one, which is it, all four corners are in the picture, but there's a ton of space around it. Can you can certainly come in a little tighter and have just a, a little bit of space, but there the four corners have to be visible in your um, viewfinder in order for the fix to be um, pretty seamless and and doable. The other this kind of distortion is is also fixable, but it's uh, it, it's fraught with uh, more potential problems. Okay, here we are at my iPad. I've got a different microphone, so this might sound a little bit different. But I wanted to show you how to do this straightening out using your device. Now, this could be an iPad, an iPhone. It could be your Android device. They all have some sort of photographing, uh, photography software. Some are better than others. I don't know them all. I know the Apple one, and it works just fine. At least it seems to. So I'm going to go to the Photos app. And I have already set up an album in here to, to have the, the example images I want to change. And you can see this one is extreme. We'll go over it again later in, in the uh, other software part. Uh, but for now, for the device, uh, this one is also, see, this one is extreme. Uh, this is pretty straight. In other words, parallel with the side of the, of the photo. And so is this. But obviously, the, the camera was at such an angle, or the, the iPhone that I took this with, it was at such an angle that it's created this very extreme difference between the right side and the, and the left side. And this one is not as bad, let's say, here, the length of that compared to that, oops, although that is shorter than this. And then the side here is a bit shorter than that side. But mostly, it's skewed this way. And then the final one is, is not too bad. It's it's uh, this one is, is well actually none of them are great but this one let's say is already pretty parallel to the side of the of the photo 
So that's not, not too bad. In other words, what this means is this was a photo taken with the camera, iPhone again, was quite um, perpendicular or square to the, to the surface. And uh, this was easier to do because this was a piece of paper, so there was no reflection from it. Now, how do we fix this? I think the first thing to do would be to show this one again. Um, and the reason is this one is already pretty good. So you'll see what happens when I go up here and I hit edit. Um, in, this, uh, in this app, it gives me a bunch of choices. And I'm going to go to this little icon here, which is uh, kind of like a square like this, uh, two squares, and that means crop. Now, this automatically changed it. You can see now how this, this, and this side are all, oops, pretty parallel. Actually, it showed me uh, there. I just touched it, and it showed me a, a map of there. That's the old, it, that's how it has skewed it. It's decided to make a change. Now, you can make adjustments. Sorry, I, I turned off the auto now. Uh, hit the auto, turn it off. There it goes back to what it was. And it isn't perfect in the end, but it's not too bad. And in fact, now you can further crop this to eliminate the sides of the, of the piece of paper, and you'd never know that this has any, any kind of skewing at all. Now, it does a, a little bit still, so this might not really be great if you're showing your bar drawing let's say, or something that accurate, uh, that you want to be so accurate, to, uh, to a teacher online. You'd still want to be able to get it, you know, as perfect as possible. And because, um, let's cancel this. Yeah, because the, the all four sides were not perfectly square, that isn't going to be uh, undistorted. Now this one is very extreme. And you'll see what happens when I try the edit again edit. Um, it doesn't, oh, I'll go to crop. Now it does not do anything automatic. You see the automatic does not show up. And I have to do this all now manually, but it's not that hard. This guy here in the Apple version of this in, in iOS, uh, this is to straighten, this is to change the, it's called keystoning, change the up, uh, 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 vertical angle, and this is to change the horizontal angle. Watch what happens when I when I hit the. First of all, I'm not. This is more rotation. I'm not going to rotate it because I feel like this side and this side are already pretty parallel to the sides of the of the image. So I'm going to go to the to the main one, which is the horizontal, because I want to make this side longer or this shorter, whatever however you want to look at it. See, I start going that way, it widens that one. I go this way, it starts to straighten it out pretty well. That's not too bad. Uh, let's say right about there. I'm able to look at the grid lines that are provided so I can compare my square to it. And I can go to the rotation again, oops, and see if there's anything. I'll just leave it at that. And that's not bad. And, and certainly for a landscape uh, painting, you, you aren't going to notice any little tiny differences in the, uh, uh, in the drawing as you would with, with a figure. And the last one is this. Same thing, we'll do the same process. Hit edit. Go to this crop. There we go. Now it says it's done it automatically. Now it still is crooked this way. And the bottom is still wider than the top, so I don't know exactly what it did. So I'm going to start with that um, rotation and just try to rotate it now so that it seems to be about level, you know, uh, parallel with these grid marks. And then uh, in this one, instead of the horizontal, we'll do the vertical. And again, I can compare the picture's edges to the grid lines and decide when it's pretty good. And I think for a study like this, it's just a, a small color study for a portrait, um, that's fine. 
That looks pretty good, and um, you know I can certainly live with that. So this type of software is very powerful in your device, and you can get just about everything you need. Look at that. That thing stayed straight. I didn't uh, discard the changes. Um, anyway, let's get to the software that you use on a computer if you're going to be doing that. So here, let's take a look at one of these uh, Barg drawings that are iPhone photos. Now you can see this is quite angled. And this bottom one is about parallel with the uh, picture picture frame or the the photo frame this one is very skewed this one is less so and so I know this piece of paper is 11 inches by 14 inches so I know it's perfectly square and the iPhone has has the ability let's see if I can find it it has the ability to make those adjustments automatically, it's got a it's got a setting. In fact, here's uh, here's just an example of of that picture. It's pretty darn good. If you look at the outside of the picture frame or the viewfinder, and you see whether these lines here, which are the the, the piece of paper, are parallel to the picture, they're pretty close. It's not quite. You see right here, it's narrower than it is here. So this upper part is still wider than the lower part. And that can, that, that can be adjusted even in, in uh, the iPhone. Uh, I'm going to show you a more powerful tool in a moment. Um, but even, even with a straightaway, right out of the camera iPhone picture, so long as these straight edges and the corners, but more important in, in the iPhone's case, the, the straight sides, if they're in your frame, it can do some amazing work. Here's another picture of mine that is another perfect piece of paper. In other words, it's perfectly um, rectangular that isn't exactly parallel to the sides. And you can see that with iPhone's fix it button, it gets pretty darn close. And what it is, if you've got an iPhone, it's, it looks something like this. Uh, there is an edit button when you, when you go into your photos. There's an edit button, then you hit the edit button, and then this thing pops up. And you can see down here, uh, this is, I'm not sure what that is. This is like some sort of enhancements and color enhancements here. And this one here is for cropping. And when you do cropping, you can crop. In other words, just make the, make the whole frame smaller. And also you can... Uh, make it, um, you can straighten out the trapezoid, which is really what you end up with if you take things at a skewed angle. Here's auto. I just hit auto, boom. And it, it turned out pretty darn square. So that works really well. I will say that with the iPhone, it, it does not work well with pictures like this. This is too skewed. It's too much of a, of a trapezoid, uh, plus it's curved here. It's, it's crazy. Um, this is much more difficult for uh, just a standard automatic um, photo to, or, uh, app to straighten out perfectly. Um, now, most of the time, uh, hopefully, almost never, <laughs> will you ever have to photograph something at this angle. I, I did that on purpose just to show the extreme uh, example, but not that I would expect people to do this. I think you ought to have a, a better angle on your, on your own work than this. This is too extreme. So it's hard to fix even with the best software. I did a couple of these earlier with Photoshop and they came out differently. In other words, each one was a bit wide and one was a bit, you see that? Look at the width. That's what I'm trying to do. That one is not, not quite right. This one is better. 
and uh, oh and you should know you should pass on let's say if you're sending this to someone to fix for you if if you don't have the software or if you're sending it to a teacher and you haven't been able to fix it you send the original and uh, you want them to to make sure that it, it, it looks right on their end uh, you also should include the exact dimensions of the piece of paper I'm going to use an, a special program that I think is worth it, especially if you're a teacher. But either way, it's not very expensive. It's not nothing. Uh, I, I paid $50 US for it recently. It's something I just was made aware of recently. It seems to work flawlessly, and it's, it does this one thing perfectly. The uh, app is called DXO, DXO Viewpoint. Can you see that? DxO Viewpoint 3. And um, it also has a Photoshop plugin that comes with it if you use Photoshop. It's better than Photoshop for this one thing, for sure. And it does a few things, but uh, it definitely does this very well. And it, it, so far, when I've experienced it, it does it perfectly. What you do is you go to the perspective area, and you hit this box with four corners and it automatically did something already see did a little thinking oh, I actually just made it smaller now each of these corners you drag and when you click on it it makes a magnification so you can see make sure you've got it right on the corner there same with this one now that's you can do this in Photoshop but it's much harder it's a little bit clunkier and what's good about this it found this corner already by itself okay then hit apply and there's my rectangle now finally to check whether it's correct it looks correct to me I know that this painting has a certain proportion so it doesn't matter if it's centimeters or or inches the proportion is 5 to 4 because this is 20 and this is 16 inches and uh, so which is a 5 to 4 proportion and if I go over here to the crop area and I, I, I go to this thing called aspect ratio I look for 5 to 4 and now it's oops let's make make a grid there okay there is a grid of five to four and I'll I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if I go to the edges of this painting there's a corner top left corner perfect and that was from a very very skewed original uh, my experience in other programs like Photoshop, no matter how expensive and powerful it is, this cropping of a perspective quite often doesn't work. It, it's usually uh, weirdly wide, sometimes narrow. So then if you take your, your 5 to 4 rectangle and, and superimpose it, you'll see that it's not quite right. So your picture, uh, here you can't tell with a landscape really, but if it was a person, they would look a bit wider. Or, or something like that so you get uh, you get some very strange perspectives this this program DxO viewpoint is worth it if, if you're going to be doing any of this it's very powerful seems to work flawlessly uh, it normally costs $80 US but it's often on sale and uh, and you and I got it for 50 and I think it's I think it's worth it this company the DxO company makes other programs uh, that do other things, um, the DxO uh, company, but um, this is really what I wanted it for, and I and there, I didn't want to spend another hundred dollars U.S. But uh, I hope this this helps. So there you have it. I hope that was useful and not too interminable. Um, very quickly to recap, uh, when you're trying to eliminate the shape distortion uh, make sure that one your camera is as uh, parallel as possible to the picture plane and two um, try to make sure that it, that uh, 
four corners or all four sides of your of your work are visible in the viewfinder uh, so that you can fix it. And uh, I think the, the other thing I, I, it's probably worth mentioning is that if you do this yourself, either using some of the software that I've already mentioned or using the, the um, built-in uh, uh, process that's in uh, smartphones quite often now, um, then you don't have to send the pictures to me or whomever you're working with uh, in that fashion. You, if you fix it, you just sent sent the cropped fixed version, just like you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't post it on your website uh, with the with the rectangle showing. You do that in order to make sure you fix you're able to fix it, and then and then you you'll have uh, re, re uh, composed your 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 picture, and then that can be sent off. Uh, just fine. If so, if it's fixed, I don't need to fix it, uh, which is great. But if you uh, uh, aren't able to for whatever reason, and or or aren't uh, too comfortable with with making that fix, then to whomever you send it off to, uh, in order for them to um, correct it, then you make sure those things are done. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, if you um, if you wish, I'd appreciate you. Uh, hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. Um, I guess the like is a sort of a thumbs up or something. And then uh, subscribe, the bell, and all that stuff, because apparently that'll help eventually if this channel grows, uh, or it'll help the channel to grow. And also uh, feel free to share the link to the video to anybody who you think might uh, find it useful. Uh, eventually it'll be public, and perhaps you're watching it now when it, when it is. But if not, um, in either way, uh, please leave uh, any comments or questions you might have below. I'd be happy to try to uh, uh, accommodate them, and maybe they'll be the topics of future videos, uh, which we will have some of that regarding uh, the other kinds of distortions, the color distortions, for instance, and, uh, and the form. But uh, for the time being, that's it. And uh, Once again, thanks very much, and I'll see you later.